come back and if you watched yesterday's video you would have seen the comparison between the two i love kits the uh, 16 scale shermans and uh and i got to thinking what if i did an additional comparison of the i love you know sherman against andy's hobby headquarters version you know they both uh put out like a korean war era tank with markings and they're both 116 scale and i thought let's just check the quality between the two and just have a kind of an unbiased uh look at it you know i got no skin in the game so i'm just a consumer anyhow um so yeah i've got that one laid out and you can see that uh i've got a couple of turrets and hulls laid out andy stuff and a big kahuna that's one six scale it's huge it's huge man well this morning i actually had to stop this video uh, mama came home and i was tired so we're gonna go ahead and pick up where we left off so i'm doing a comparison obviously we have two different brands um actually i've got three different brands here but one comes assembled um radio controlled pretty awesome tank um this is an older version of the the hang along sherman and just the, the, there were some questions from some folks on my youtube channel about you know is there a company that's going to produce the m4 sherman in this configuration all right and uh, the answer is yes uh, you know these are, you're looking at an early production vehicle that probably has a cash turret etc etc um i love kit is actually they just announced in april that they had the m4 sherman that they're releasing so uh, to those of you that are curious, yes, the kit does exist, um, but right now it looks like you can only order it from Hobby Link Japan, and it's a couple of hundred bucks. So, yeah, there you have it. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to pay all that shipping and stuff. So, anyhow, getting back to this, um, you know, I have all the different scales listed here, 72nd, 35th, 16th scale, and then way over here, I have a 1-6 scale dragon models sherman that i've never started and i've had that tank for oh my gosh i can't tell you how many years uh interesting thing on this there's zero cast texture on that turret everything is super smooth and so i'm going to have to do some research to figure out how to get a scale uh, texture applied to that and uh i suspect that what i need to do is you know go check out all the east coast armory videos and uh and see how they do it because uh, they have some awesome stuff. And he also has a lot of aftermarket parts for this particular kit. But getting back to this, um, looking at Andy's and the I Love kit, uh, just doing some comparisons on the turrets. I mean, obviously we have some, uh, uh, some color differences. The I noticed on the I Love kit, and this goes for both the turret hatches and the hull hatches they seem to be larger as opposed to uh what andy's has okay his you'll notice that his hatch uh hull is a little bit smaller than than the uh the i love kit and maybe that changes once you build it and things get a little tighter and closer and who knows but Right away, you know, on the on the I Love kit, they come with this rubbery plastic kind of um, mantle cover, which, you know, has some flexibility to it. But I think the trick is going to be uh, how does this get mounted to here without boogering up the this material? Because, you know, it's, it's not easy to paint, not easy to glue. So that's going to be an interesting thing to see. Now... The comparison on the turret, oops, excuse me, I'm, I'm squatting here, it almost fell over. You'll notice there's a height difference, okay? Now the I Love kit has a some casting numbers here, but if you just 
and you'll have to take away this this edge. As a matter of fact, maybe if we line it up this way, we can get a little bit better comparison and lift that up. It's close. All right. So height-wise, I think we're okay. Um, but there are some additional numbers on this on the side of this turret as opposed to what Andy has. Um, now Andy's mantles uh, or mantlet or whatever you want to call it, his kit comes with a couple of them. All right, so you have a couple of options to go with on his on his kit, and his covers are molded in plastic, so they have much more realistic uh, creasing and details and things like that. The only problem you're going to have is that the t the, uh, the gun elevation uh, probably won't be uh, operational as this one might be. So doesn't matter. I mean, a guy's going to pose his kit the way he does. So looking uh, at the turrets from the top, uh, we can see there's a lot of similar um, details. Um, the the casting number. This uh, 7054366, the foundry logos and all that business are the same as they are on his kit. However, this particular serial number or whatever, 0402, is different than this one. So, that's good that they uh, they made some changes. Um, you'll notice here a little bit difference in the uh, periscope location as opposed to this one. Uh, which means that this is probably pivotable and adjustable uh, as to where this one is is not okay the buildup of the uh the periscope here or whatever is a little bit different as well and it appears that the cupola sizes are about the same the holes are different okay and, and now before i go into that just to just to put it uh, put it at ease. You know, I always wonder how many companies are sharing molds with each other. And I can tell you, there's no mold sharing going on here. Um, there's, <laughs> you know, there's no way this is going together. So um, it was just a quick test for me to, to confirm that, you know, these guys are building and designing their own stuff. All right. And again, this is a TACOM product. Um, with Andy's Hobby Headquarters label. So, humma, humma, humma. All right, now the hull, you'll notice the hull differences. Um, we've got some nice cast texturing on the hull. Same thing with this one. Um, the, the, the thing that I noticed between the two vehicles is that Andy's kits have much more prominent details embedded into their molds. And so they just look crispier, a lot finer. Um, you'll notice here that the, the machine gun port has to be built up and is probably movable. This one here is sort of molded in there and it is what it is. Also their hull on the I Love kit, the fenders and the skirts and everything are molded into the hull itself. On Andy's, you have to build that stuff up. So you have the individual fenders and the skirts which is kind of nice because if you're going to, um, you know, maybe have a damaged fender or a missing fender or whatever, it's much easier to create that effect when they come in pieces like this as opposed to this version where you'll have to do some cutting, all right? The, uh, the, uh, the hull difference is the lower hull. You know, you'll notice here that uh, these bump outs to the hull are already molded in place on Andy's kit. Uh, they are not on the I Love kit. You'll have to build those up. But also on theirs, they have, uh, you know, these mounting plates for the suspension are molded into this part of the hull as to where Andy's will have to be built up. So my philosophy is if you have to build up parts to, to get that detail, it's going to look more detailed, period because you have nice recesses and nice sharp corners where things are mounting and stuff like that. Andy's kit has an escape hatch. The I Love kit does not, okay? Um, the, the bottom molding here, 
similar, but you'll notice Andy's has much more crispier details, okay? Uh, I'm assuming that's a drain plug of some type. But, so there's that. So, for some of the detail parts that go on top of the turret, uh, both companies put the majority of their parts on a sprue dedicated to the turret, okay? Same thing with Andy's. Uh, Andy's has, like I said, a couple of uh, mantle options for you to use. Um, here, you will notice, for instance, the loader's hatch has the, uh, the periscope uh, rotatable plate molded into his hatch. Uh, and when you look at Andy's, um, his are separate, okay? So, uh, having not looked at the instructions yet, but this appears to be a pivotable, positionable uh, periscope. The Commander's Cupola, um, I love kit. Basic details are there. And uh, when you look at Andy's, check out the difference. Very crisp details, including the uh, the large uh, flathead screws or bolts that secure this thing to the ring that's below it. Um, and there's also some additional uh, parts. Um, one of the things I noticed about this kit um, is some of the internals of the turret. I didn't notice any internals on the I Love kit, but Andy's has some of the internal breech components, uh, which will be on another sprue, but you'll have some visibility of the main gun on the interior of the turret. Uh, Andy's does come with a metal barrel, okay, as a, it, it, you know, in lieu of using this plastic barrel. And the plastic version of the barrel obviously is two halves. Uh, we've got some slide molding here on the, uh, on the muzzle end so um, but anyhow huge difference in in plastic and in details now here's the 1919 uh, machine gun here are the other side plates to that and the 50 caliber that they have listed in here here's the 50 caliber machine gun uh, parts getting back to the other turret bag uh, for the I love kit you only have one mantle option uh, and uh, here's the gun. The gun is actually shorter. And the muzzle brake at the end is in two pieces. Okay. These are uh, storage clamps for 50 caliber barrels. And I don't see it on this sprue, but I'm sure they exist on Andy's kit. I just have to find it. Here are the uh, internals of the main gun. So even though the turret isn't fully outfitted, when you look through the hatch, you're going to be able to see the main gun. So the trunnions, the breech, and all that kind of stuff are there. Uh, we've got a basket or guards or whatever. I mentioned earlier in the conversation how the I Love kit has the fenders and these skirts molded on. Uh, in Andy's kit, they are separate pieces, okay? Um, and that's in this particular sprue. So these will have to be put on separately, um, which is going to add a level of detail that, that you're not getting from the other kit. Also, here are the front fenders. Notice they're separate, and the details are a little bit more prominent. Okay? Different hold pieces. Mainly the rear end, front transmission area. If you remember from the last video, the, the front sprocket on the I Love kit, you have to assemble that sprocket piece to the hub. On Andy's kit, it's already molded in place. Um, the other obvious thing that I saw, which, which I really like about Andy's kit, is these top deck plates, these ventilation plates, okay? Uh, probably the air intakes. Uh, when you look at the I Love kit, they're fairly thick and they're solid. When you look at Andy's, there's light shining through them. So those vents are open, okay? 
and that's a big deal when it comes to details. You know, you're going to have some natural light penetrating through there, uh, as opposed to this one here where you're going to have it painted and you're probably going to put some panel liner in there to highlight those recesses. So it's just another level of detail that Andy put into his kit that is very much appreciated. Uh, what else we got here? Here's some more of those, uh, what appears to be vision ports, probably for the uh, driver's hatches. Uh, here you notice that we've got some seats, things like that. Okay, and the support rollers. Now, taking a peek at the the uh, suspension, you know, the bogies and stuff. Definitely a different uh, construction process here. Um, here you're looking at the spring situation on the I Love Kit versus Andy's. All right. So they're definitely assembled differently. But there's clearly what appears to be many more parts to build up the suspension. And maybe that's because there's a little an element of flexibility to the setup. Um, the road wheels on Andes are molded in plastic to include the, uh, the tire portion of the road wheel, the rubber. Uh, but you'll notice on his, he's got U.S. tire markings on there as well as the size of the, uh, of the uh, tire embossed into the plastic, which is nice on this particular kit. You have to put the rubber piece on there. And again, you know, painting this stuff, uh, adhering this stuff or whatever, you know, and I don't even know how this is going to react over time under weight um, after the model's built. But the only, uh, the only marking on there is what looks like the tire size. And that's scaled down a little bit from what Andy has. But, you know, those will have to get mounted to that. The differences in the road wheels. All right, see the crispiness? I just feel that these have more depth. Now maybe the plastic's darker and that's causing that, I don't know. But looking at it, it just seems that these are a little bit finer details. Okay. Here we have similar suspension parts. Um, this appears to have some casting marks in it. These do not. So that's a nice little added detail in there is to have you know casting numbers and things like that in there. Uh, what else can I show you? That's the rear roller. And... believe that this is the rear roller set on that one either a wheel or whatever again look at the detail differences okay nice and crispy here we're looking at Andy's tracks uh, and, the, and the system to build it. They come with like little jigs. That you can put all these jigs together so you can build a bunch of tracks at the same time. The, uh, the guide pins or whatever you want to call them for each track uh, is already sort of pre-assembled in this fashion. Uh, you'll just have to finish up the center, uh, the center guides and stuff like that. On this one, you have to cut a lot of parts and build that as well but you're driving pins through all of this stuff, okay? And you're putting these end caps separately. So this is gonna be a much more challenging um, build. It's gonna take some time to do it, and I'm not sure how well they go together. If you look at the comparison between the track blocks, I can't do this good. You can see the thickness of, of the pads as opposed to this one, so. Uh, these are a little bit more thin, and these have a, a thicker, chunkier feel to them. So those are some of the differences of the track system. Either way, you're going to be a track-building fool for a couple of days. All right, getting to 
getting to the 50 caliber uh, remember the darker plastic zandies uh, you can see there's some really nice deep details uh, in the side plate of that 50 caliber not so much on this particular one um, here's the other side of the weapon they slide molded the front portion of the of the vents here and on this particular weapon they also slide molded it and molded it separately. So it's a separate piece. The 50 caliber comes in a different configuration on the I Love kit. The barrel is also slide molded. You don't have to drill that out. That's nice. All right. And we got some jerry cans and some other, you know, ammo cans and stuff here. Let's take a look at the clear plastic and figures. All right, taking a peek at the clear plastic, um, both of them are, you know, fairly clear. No issues, right? Um, however, I can't tell if those round circles in there, if I'm looking at a, at a, uh, at a location where the mold released out or whatever, that was ventilation or whatever, but you can tell the uh, headlights are kind of basic. Uh, when you look at Andy's headlights, you can see all the uh, the uh, the etching is on the back side. So when it's installed, you've got a nice crystal clear front end with the internal etching of the uh, headlights, like you would normally see on a on a vehicle. Now on Andy's uh, periscopes, I don't see those around ejection pin marks. And you know, on this particular part of this periscope, most of that's going to be olive drab, anyways. Um, uh, also, the way that the uh, the vision ports mount, uh, there's three hole pins there for those mounts. These do not have it. Now that might be because these have to mount from the outside. I have no idea yet. I didn't look at the instructions, um, but these definitely go in up through the bottom and mount that way, as opposed to these where. Um, actually they look like they have to be set in from the outside so you're going to have some issues there and uh, you need to be very careful when you build that so there's definitely some clear differences in the clear parts no pun intended <laughs> um now the figure andy's figure it comes in multiple parts he is hyper detailed his head is sculpted pretty nice but it's in two pieces and you can put the helmet on separately the helmet has been slide molded as you can see uh and that's good so the i love kit comes with a resin figure and the guy in the in the kit looks like he's got this scared crapless look on his face but it is one figure that's going to have to be cut uh shaped a little bit uh, put together so that'll be interesting to see him versus this guy his figures always look really cool um so differences in figures. This kit, you get a resin one. This one here, you get it in multiple pieces. So what's it going to be? I love or Andy's? Okay. You're looking at $139 at Andy's Hobby Headquarters for both versions. He has this version here uh, with Korean War markings and the Easy 8 version. They're both the same price. So that's not a bad deal for what you're getting. This kit... I think the cheapest I found it was $179 currently today as it's listed. My uh, unbiased uh, whatever is cool kit, but Andy gets the win because they are just crispier parts. They, they look far more detailed in my opinion. A lot of details, hidden details that are there. Um, and the value for the money uh you're paying 40 50 dollars less for this kit and uh and i think you're getting a lot more for the kit you be the judge you can do what you want to do i have them both it'll be interesting to see how they look when they're both built up and i'm sure they're going to be good looking tanks it's just that you know if you're if you're a stickler for details and depth and crispiness then i would be pointing you in this direction Okay, so that's pretty much all I got on that one. And like I said, I don't have any skin in this game other than being a consumer 
and but you know i give all these companies love they're uh they're okay this one here we'll have to look at that one day we'll compare that against andy's tiger uh hobby boss and you might be shocked yeah andy's beats that one by a country mile i'm just saying hey thanks for watching this little comparison video and uh you know do your do your math you know you, you know what your wallet can handle and maybe one day we'll we'll take a peek at that dude right there have a good night good morning wherever you live in the world get out there and build something put a piece on something and uh yeah